So, hi. So here we go, back again. Look, um, yeah, I changed the name of the YouTube channel to my name because I have bigger, you know, ambitions for this channel. I just, I did, I did, I don't, I don't really want this just to be about ancient Egyptian architecture, but it will also be about my my own architecture. Okay, so if you've been following me. I will still do ancient Egyptian architecture because that's really my passion, okay? And uh, we will at some point do more uh, videos on key buildings because to, to cover 3000 years of Egyptian architecture is gonna, it, it can, one lifetime is not even enough, okay? So I will do key buildings. I will select like, let's say, I don't know, five or 10 buildings per each, I don't know, century or I don't know. And we will go through the key buildings of ancient Egypt, okay? But at the same time, I'm gonna promote, uh, promote, no, but I'm gonna show you uh, my architectural projects, okay? At the same time, because I think there is a, also an interest in that, okay? Uh, so, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do, uh, because there is a lot, there are a lot of videos coming uh, uh, every week, I'm doing a, a video or every two weeks, so. So yeah, so today, <laughs> actually today it's, uh, I wanted to, to make a video um, about um, my own take about the Great Pyramid of Giza. Now it's very ambitious as a, as a video and uh, to be fair, I say it straight up, like I say it now, I, my sources of information are the historical reports uh, that we have that are trustworthy, okay? Um, because they, you know, they've been proven to be scientifically correct, right? Uh, although archaeology, it's not really a science. It's like it's it's a, it it has a scientific take on a humanistic um, I don't know mission. I don't know. I mean. Yeah, so I mean, I wanted to know that my sources of information are, um, yeah, historical reports and archaeologists and, and all, all of this. So, uh, and another thing I want to say is that I haven't read everything about the Great Pyramid, okay? I, there are other books that I haven't read and there are so many, like, about the Great Pyramid of Giza, there are like, I don't know how many books, okay? And I haven't got the time yet, yet, to, to read everything, okay? So please take this um, as as you know as just an opinion of a young architect uh, <laughs> that has been studying ancient Egyptian architecture for the last two and a half years, but don't take it as an expert uh, opinion. Okay. So five questions and uh, first question: Who built the Great Pyramid? So I want to actually uh, share with you the screen. Um, Let's say, yeah, you should be able to see this, okay? Yeah. So let, let's put actually the drawings behind us uh, as we as we as we as we speak. So who built the pyramid? So look, um, the pyramid was built by humans, okay? Why? Because the pyramid it's actually not very precise, okay? So you might say, what? It's not precise. Look, what do we mean by precision? Um, the rough stones the pyramid the pyramid um it's very precise in its dimensions when it refers to the casing stones place the, the place of the casing stones okay and and the alignment of those to to the north uh to to, to true north okay so but if you take a look about uh, if you take a look of, on the on the stones, for example, take a look at these stones. Okay, these are the top of the pyramid. Now these are very rough. You see the gizel, the puzzle that you have between stones. Like if this was an ancient uh, alien or a, or even or even an ancient uh, civilization that was super advanced using machines, you will not do these corners. You will do every block precisely uh, with the same dimension, like Lego. Okay. Because you have an industry, you have you have a you have uh, let's say an in, yeah an industry set up in a way that you can actually produce an amount like a, a huge amount of blocks with the same exact dimension. So this is an indication that they whoever built this 
and who was the Egyptians? Uh, I, I mean, it's in Egypt. Uh, who, who else? Who, who else could build this? Um, whoever built this, the Egyptians, they built uh, craft. So this is actually the biggest handmade artifact in the world. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So who built? Uh, was the ancient Egyptians and um, but when so yeah if you know we, you've been following you've been following uh, my, me um, the, you know the, the channel we have the papyrus of Merer which talks uh, which dates about the fourth dynasty that in the, actually the, the time of Khufu um, that tells us that uh, there was a construction of the pyramids in Giza for, for King Khufu and the blocks were carried from, you know, the like Tura. I, I mean, this this was not this papyrus was not found in Tura. Uh, I think it was found in an oasis, like somewhere in the coast, uh, somewhere in the coastline of uh, you know of the Red Sea. But so we have one document, which is this papyrus of Merer, uh, which says that the pyramid was for Khufu, and blocks were carried uh, and transported from that place to Giza. Okay. So, I mean, what else do we want? What else of a proof we want that this was done by the Egyptians at the time of Khufu? Now, you know, there are graffitis inside of the pyramid, uh, you know, on the, on the so-called relieving chambers, although they don't really relieve much, uh, which is this one's here, you know. These are the relieving chambers, and uh, not in the first chamber, this one here is... Uh, Davison's chamber. It's not that, that's empty, but I will I will actually because it was found by you know Davison right in the 17th century in the 1700s um, you know um, and it was found empty without any graffiti and people say oh look that, that, that's the reason why um, uh, the graffitis that were found above. Uh, were, were a forgery because the, the first one was never found so I will argue that uh, the bat well, you know the bat that lives there um, and that, that that chamber was found full of you know uh, dump you know uh, by the bats I, I will argue if that uh, actually will not corrode uh, the, su the surface of the stones uh, a little bit uh, just enough to get rid of any possible graffiti but anyway, that was not fun, but the, you, you know, uh, Howard, Car oh, Howard Carter, oh my god. <laughs> um, oh gosh, I forgot the name. Uh, Howard Weiss uh, found graffitis on those blocks above, on those chambers above. And those graffitis, they are believed to be genuine, and I believe they're genuine, like, because, first of all, we, you have many. Second, um, Weiss could not have known the... Um, what was it called? The the solar no the sol the Horus name of the pharaoh. Okay, by then, and also um, there are some graffiti that goes beyond uh, some stones. So if you remove a little bit of the beam, you find that the graffiti goes beyond. So that means that it's actually uh, whoever depicted that whoever whoever painted the the graffiti, they painted it before the putting before putting the blocks um, so you know those are original graffitis okay um, so yeah I mean who built it the ancient Egyptians in the fourth dynasty um, now how was this whole thing built okay that's a different <laughs> that's a different story so I'm not gonna give you a, a full uh, picture okay so as you know, the pyramid sits on top of a little bit of a hill here. There is a little bit of a hill, okay? So they, they uh, let's say, they uh, cleaned the, 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 the area of the base, okay? They leveled it up using some sort of water system, you know, hydraulic system to make sure that everything is flat. Then they started from the east side, which is the most, the most accurate to true north, and then they proceeded with uh, with an orthogonal um, way uh, to build the other side, okay? Because they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't measure the diagonal because there is a hill in the middle, okay? 
So they proceeded orthogonally to the to that side. Now it's absurdly, uh, absurdly um, accurate. Okay, like it's true. It's unbelievable. Okay, but I mean, if you got enough people and you've been building pyramids for the last two hundred years, well, maybe you can figure this out, right? Um, and to be honest, this is the only one that is as accurate, right? Uh, the other pyramid doesn't, are not as accurate as this one. So th the great thing about the Great Pyramid of Giza is that you have so many things combined here and so many, you know, um, unique features, uh, such as the accuracy of the alignment to, th to through north, such as three internal chambers uh, with three different levels and shafts and like, it's 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 truly a unique piece of architecture and which i don't think it's ever been surpassed uh, in our human <laughs> you know history uh, uh you know it's i i believe this to be one of the most poetical places in the world and uh, i believe this to be one of the best, uh, you know like it's just it's a magical monument so how was this built? So, as I say, they laid the foundation, then they started to build, the, you know, the, the, the first layer. And then they were, I mean, whether they used ramps, we have, we have found ramps on the Pyramid of Second Cat and the Pyramid of Sela and other little pyramids that we have found some, uh, some ramps. Okay. So they actually used ramps. They knew how to make ramps. <laughs> they actually, you know, have the causeways. They used ramps for sure. Now, what was the shape of the ramp and what was we uh, how like what's what's the layout of the ramp was it an internal lamp was it an external was it a spiral was it like a lot we don't know we don't know so it's pro they probably they use the ramp uh, but my take is i think like I, this might be crazy for you but i think like herodotus might be right uh they might have just uh, you know, lifted the stones with uh, timber um, or wood structures, right? So I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy, uh, but I've been in Giza and I've seen how steep this sh <laughs> these pyramids are. A ramp, I it's, it will really it's absurd. If you go to Giza and you see the pyramids in front of you and you imagine a ramp going all the way up to the top. It's impossible. Um, so, so anyway, I, I'm with Herodotus. With the la now, whether they use a hundred thousand people, I mean, a hundred thousand people is impossible because that's it's, it's <laughs> one tenth of the population of Egypt by then. And also, I think it's impossible to put a hundred thousand people uh, on the line for like thirty years, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So, how was this built uh, then? How how um, how did they lift the blocks of the king's chamber? Right, these blocks here are the granite blocks. Okay, the only granite blocks that are in the Great Pyramid, and uh, yeah, these are quite quite heavy uh, blocks. So let me go through the actual yeah. So these drawings are from Maragioglio Rinaldi in the sixties. Okay, uh, they are one of the most accurate we got. So. I don't know how they lifted these stones and they, how they put it in place, especially when we are talking about like 50 meters above ground, okay? Uh, or more, uh, give me a sec. This chamber is sits, no, it should be about 50 meters, yeah. Um, because it's lower than the center of the, of the pyramid, isn't it? Yeah, it's around 50 meters, anyway. So, and also the blocks of the Grand Gallery. So, and the, the cool thing about the Grand Gallery is that some of these blocks are, are really huge. Like it's really like, they don't, Maragioni, Rinaldi, they don't show here the actual, the, the stereo, the joints, okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, these, these blocks are quite, quite huge. And um, some of these blocks like compete in uh, weight with the granite blocks of the king's chamber. So, uh, guys, I, I don't know. I don't know how, if anybody has an answer, how they lifted these blocks. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, they might have used ramps about this height, about 50 meters, 
here, okay? And then they proceeded with the wooden, you know, uh, lifting with wood, uh, you know, structures. Um, so yeah, let, let's give it, let's say that they use the ramp. Let's imagine they use the ramp from, you know, the level of the king's chamber uh, to the ground. Okay, so it's like 50 meters and to, to go for to 50 meters, you need a long ramp, but you can, I think that's, that could be feasible. Okay. Uh, and then the rest of the pyramid that would actually have built um, with, uh, you know, layer by layer, little by little, you know. But anyway, um, there is a problem with the time, obviously, like, uh, obviously, you know, 2.2 million blocks of stones in uh, 24 years, it's quite of an accomplishment. Um, then, so, um, then, I mean, casing stones, right? So then once you build the core of the of the of the building you basically do it as a little bit of a, a like an onion a little bit right so so the pyramids before the great pyramid of giza were built with blocks that were inward laid inward and they were built in layers okay now the great pyramid of giza it's not built like that uh, the great pyramid of giza is built in horizontal layers and it was not enlarged uh, at, at least so far as we know there is not evidence for this, so it was not built in layers. It was built li really like layer by layer, or horizontal layer by layer. Okay, um, that's we know. And then they would uh, they would achieve the top somehow <laughs> with the casing stones. Put the casing stones from the top to the bottom. Um, well, I mean. And they did it very precisely. Like if you see the, the, the casing stones of the bent pyramid, boy, that's, that's outstanding. The, 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 the accuracy, it's, it's, it's wow. I mean, anyway, what are the functions of the, of the chambers? Okay. So uh, the pyramid were monuments, uh, in a cemetery. Okay. So they were, you know, uh, they are all positioned in a cemetery, all of them. All 108 pyramids are in a cemetery, in a necropolis. And around the pyramids are mastabas <laughs> with burial chambers, with uh, people depicted like death, you know. And the pyramid of Djoser has Djoser depicted there in with bas reliefs, like hunting and, you know, happy in the afterlife. So that, you know, was a tomb. Uh, whether the Great Pyramid of Giza uh, was a tomb or not, um, I mean, so far, uh, I, I believe it was a tomb. Uh, whether or not we actually found the, the final resting burial place of King Khufu, that might be a little bit of a debate, okay? So, and why I say this? Well, um, yeah, so, I mean, this looks like a burial chamber, right? <laughs> it's actually, and there is a sarcophagus there. So, uh, and this also looks like a burial chamber. Uh, although we have reports that says there was a sarcophagus here, but then, I mean, we are not sure entirely if that's actually the case. The queen's chamber was actually plugged here, okay? It was found plugged and then they, they went inside. Uh, so it was not accessible, okay? And if you can imagine here, this part here would have been plugged so that the only accessible part, well, first of all, the pyramid was not accessible. And now you might say, well, why? Well, you wanna do offerings. The offerings were made in the temple, in the mortuary temple, okay? And all the rituals were made in the, in the mortuary temple. Now, so what do, you, what do you need the pyramid for? You need the pyramid to put the body of the Pharaoh. Well, 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 why three chambers? Okay, so so for, um, normally they would uh, bury the body of a pharaoh back in the times, like of the first dynasty, under the sand and then putting like, you know, uh, timber, like wood structure on top and then that's it, okay? Uh, you know, with a mud brick, classic mud brick um, uh, underground tomb. And then they upgraded it, putting a mastaba on top, and then they put it a mastaba on top of a mastaba, 
on top of Amos Dab and they p- created the first step pyramid and then they tried to go for a smooth uh, pyramid and then here we go with the Great Pyramid of Giza, okay? So that's the evolution. And so why three chambers? Uh, well, this is not the first time we have three chambers instead of a pyramid. We have the father of Khufu, Sneferu, which have done a pyramid uh, called the Red Pyramid with three chambers and a pyramid called the Bent Pyramid with two chambers. Uh, so the fact that you have more chambers is not actually a problem for, to me. Uh, we, it's not just it's not just Nefros, like before the you know fourth dynasty, we have mastabas with you know more than one chamber. Uh, so if you take the so-called Joser terraces, the, must, the huge mastabas in Beit Kalaf, those have more than one chamber. And also take the Hotep Sekenwi chamber, like that's a crazy, crazy labyrinthic tomb second dynasty so so yeah more than one chamber is not a problem to me um, but yeah did we actually find the final resting place of King Khufu uh, that's uh, that's why do I doubt well why do I doubt that this is not the final resting place of King Khufu uh, well first of all we know that this pyramid was plundered in ancient times. And when I mean ancient, I mean probably the first intermediate period, okay? Uh, which is like, what, 200 years after Khufu or 300, something like that. So, um, so whoever came into this pyramid, they probably came through the what we call now Alma Moon Tunnel, okay? Uh, yeah. Um, and... Uh, and then they would, you know, go up, take everything, and go away. Um, the argument is that uh, the uh, tunnels are so small that eventually you don't have any treasure that, you know, would be small enough to just bring it out. But I think people are just in, you know, you can just, I mean, it, like, I don't know. Like uh, when they, they have you seen the the the, the, the actual the, the 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 treasure of the mother of Khufu? Uh, the, when they found the tomb, they found like these small boxes, and yeah, of course they have this huge um, like tender like structure, but it was folded in a box. So and even in Tutankhamun's tomb, that's New Kingdom. Nothing to do with uh, with this, but everything seems to have been dismantled. Um, and put it on a, in a box uh, when um, when uh, when you were boring the actual treasure with the, with the body of the pharaoh, right? So the argument that uh, the treasure was would have been too big to pass through the tunnels. Uh, well, first I think if you are robbing a, a pyramid, you don't care about anything. You just smash things that are too big, and you try to sell them like even broken, right? Uh, because what you care is actual gold or like small things or I don't know but nobody knows how was the King Khufu treasure right uh, so I, I buy that argument and uh, so for me it's not a problem um, the size of the of the corridors uh, now again like the sarcophagus to me seems a bit small and uh, but again really small like um because you want to consider that inside of the sarcophagus you have coffins and then inside of the coffin you have like the mummy and so yeah but um, I mean it it's actually looks like a sarcophagus so I don't know guys uh, I'm confused about this <laughs> um, I'm not entirely 100% convinced that this is Khufu chamber um, but yeah I mean could be absolutely so we'll see and uh, one more thing, uh, so the functions. So you see this, this is the well shaft. I don't know, this is a question mark for me. If you, if you have, you know, a good answer about the well shaft, please let me know because uh, so far that I've been studying, I can't make sense of this. Uh, obviously this was done during the construction, this part here, and then the tunnel. I mean, some people say this is, was an escape, you know, you plug. So as you can see, this is, you know you have granite granite plugs here plugging the ascending corridor. 
So they say, okay, the workers, the, 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 the people put it here, the body of the pharaoh, they closed it and then to, 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 to go out, they plugged and then they excavate the well shaft. But that doesn't make sense. You can just go out and then re like take away the security measures and then the plugs will just drop and close the space. Now, I don't think these plugs were ever um, sliding, you know, uh, I think uh, you can't really, you know, this doesn't work like uh, this is, this is, <laughs> this is architecture. So it's not like you can just, you know, slide down granite plugs like that. It's not, it's not a machine. It's not a, it's not a machine. Okay. So I think these plugs were, were put in there. Uh, on in the time of the actual building, right? They were not sliding down. So, uh, so yeah, you. I, I don't think this was an escape uh, thing for the workers. This might have been uh, the best theory. I think I'm buying is that this might have been uh, actually a system to to ventilate uh, while the workers were digging the subterranean chambers. Okay, the subterranean chamber because you probably would have some breathing through through this as well it would help you know um but yeah why is it here and not actually in the subterranean chamber well that's i don't know um i don't know the grotto i don't know is it, it's probably a natural like it's not i don't know i don't think it's a natural feature i think because this is like full of sand and rubble and there is a reason why the well shaft passed through a grotto. Now, where there was grotto that was be born before the, the well shaft or the other way around, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so the function of the queen chamber and the function of the subterranean chamber. Look, subterranean chamber really looks unfinished. Uh, it really does, guys. I mean, I know it's, it's disappointing, but it, it, it's an unfinished chamber. Uh, that's what it is. And um, so they, you know, excavate it down. They say, nah, mm, for some reason, we don't want this to be there. So let's actually put a queen chamber. Now, the argument here is that they did the queen chamber and then they changed their mind and they did the, queen, the, the king chamber. But right about the time where they were uh, actually building the queen chamber, they were doing the, 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 <laughs> the shafts here of the queen chamber. So there is an argument that they couldn't, like, they were already knowing that they would do the king's chamber uh, when they were doing the queen's chamber. Otherwise, you will not have the the the, the path of the of the shafts uh, as it is now. Okay. Uh, why the shafts never reached the outside, and why the shafts were blocked uh, here? What's the reason of the shafts? no idea guys these were not ventilation shafts because they were they, they, these don't reach the outside and these don't 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 reach the inside so it was really like a stone okay like it's not was not ventilating okay totally miss total mystery here whether the king's chamber one they reached the outside uh but we don't know if actually reached the outside the casing stones because the casing stones we don't have them anymore so we don't know if they were actually plugged or not, uh, these, uh, these shafts. Uh, I believe that these shafts of the, of the king's chamber were found, like the queen's chamber, uh, plugged. Uh, they were uh, not plugged, but you know, they were, f like, they were not um, visible. They were not like left uh, with a hole. Uh, but I might be wrong. But I think I'm, I'm right about that. So what's the function of the Great Gallery? Well, I think this is just grandiose. I don't think this is an engineer reason. Like, uh, I don't, you don't need this height uh, to actually um, for anything. Like, you just you just have you just want to do it because it's just grandiose. Uh, I think because this is also why they did, uh, you know, this is not the first time we have corbel ceilings. They've been doing corbel ceiling for like the last two or three generations, like since uh, since the Maidum pyramid. So I think this is an aesthetic reason and a structural reason. Uh, so, but mm, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's an actual um, 
functioning reason, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, if if it's not enough an explanation, I understand you guys. Uh, this is uh, five thousand years. No, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, four thousand five hundred years old. Mm, enigma <laughs> we need to solve. And why these blocks are vertical, and some others are not? Mystery. Uh, why uh, these niches? Probably because they use it to build, like you know, they probably put it like a timber beams. But then, like, why? Like, just I don't. Know. Who can tell? Who can tell? Um, yeah. Uh, also, they found sand behind the blocks of the corridor here in the west of the corridor of the Queen's Chamber. Now, why there is sand behind? <sighs> fill up the gaps or might, there might be another chamber like who knows guys who knows who knows how many chambers there are in this monument still um, and also uh, the, the, there is an argument why, why Kafren doesn't have any other chamber uh, and I'm like well maybe the chambers are filled with sand you know and we don't detect them anymore with the scan pyramid uh, technique you know but anyway so who entered first in the pyramid? Uh, so we have a report by a uh, an Arab uh, guy. I don't remember Alma Krisi, maybe I don't remember the name of the Arab guy, but he tells that Alma Moon digged through an existing breach. And uh, also we have uh, a papyrus, the papyrus of Ipo Ewer, and uh, that says it's a it's a Middle Kingdom papyrus that states that the pyramid was looted in ancient times. Uh, so it's a middle kingdom so you know ancient times like you know might be the actual times of Khufu or a little bit later in the intermediate period and they say that the pyramids were concealed before they were looted so first people who got inside the pyramid and got the treasure were the actual Egyptians themselves in the first intermediate period probably uh, why it looks uh, ruined as it does well the pyramid was uh, looted inside but also also suffered an earthquake uh, in the 13th century if I'm not wrong and uh, so a lot of the casing stones fell and uh, yeah I mean some people were just looting the casing stones uh, instead of quarrying them in Tura you know they were fallen already and they were just climbing a few layers and just take them out and build the mosques uh, in Cairo with those and actually to be fair at least they they, they they the Muslims back then they did an amazing job with the mas with the with the mosques so at least you know they used the casing stones to build great stuff and not just you know bathrooms uh, <laughs> like in Dubai I don't know you know I don't I know Dubai didn't exist back then but uh, I mean just just say so uh, were, were was it were there ever a um, like on top of the pyramid like on I mean this is a, a, these are the queen the so called queen's pyramid um, let me go through the section was there ever a capstone uh, the band band stone on the top of the pyramid here um, and was it gold so no evidence that it was gold and um, we never found I mean we found some stones that could be the band band stones of some pyramids uh, I am of the idea that that capstone was probably a normal Tura limestone and was not gilded in gold uh, yeah yeah because well first of all we don't have any evidence of that and um, yeah, I just, I just, I just, I just don't know why, why people believe that. I just, <laughs> I just don't know why that's been reported in documentaries and things like that. Um, yeah, and yeah. So, I mean, what to say about the Great Pyramid apart from this? Like, guys, this is. I mean, I, I know this. It might be disappointing to you that I'm not talking to you about any like magical purpose of the pyramid. Look, I'm. I, I like to consider myself uh, an open-minded one so if this I, I mean for sure this pyramid is a it's a this monument is this artifact is a mechanism for serenity uh, because when I entered and when, when I got out I really felt like oh fuck I really done an amazing experience and I, re I really felt uplifted 
was one of those moments in life I, I remember the, the day it was the 14th of January and of 2021 or two <laughs> 2022 um, and I can remember uh, I, I felt like I've done something that oh, boy like it was was meant to be done in my lifetime uh, so if there is any magical or power behind the behind the stones or behind the, the actual land I I buy this I buy this I I I, I, I agree it's a it's a super special place whether there is some magnetism whether there is some like whatever um, I buy the magical um, characteristics uh, features of, of the pyramid uh, for some reason this monument does uh, attract millions of people every every year and uh, and attracted uh, humans since ever and this was always a, an enigma to be solved for for everybody uh, for in all the centuries of human history uh, so <laughs> if you have read the book of um, the alchemist the alchemist um, even in that book you know the pyramids are like a sort of a, a pilgrimage place you know in a way uh, so it's just yeah I mean I just I don't know what what to say more um, I mean I know there are other features I can explain to you but I don't I mean the porcolis as well like there are so many other features that I can go through but I, I don't know how to explain the whole thing right <laughs> so it could take like weeks or months <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think like I I've been answering a little bit what I could, uh, like five questions <laughs> at least, and I hope you're happy with this. And uh, look, I don't know what else to say about the Great Pyramid. Um, honestly, I might just uh, conclude the series of episodes on the, of the Great Pyramid here today, and we can move on because <laughs> it's been a long time. We've been doing the great pyramid so so i might just do the next episode i might just do the the catherine pyramid and the valley temple i mean look i'm not gonna go through these things it's just too much um well, i'm gonna do catherine menkaure and then abu rawash abu gorash abu sir yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be still a long time with before we finish the old kingdom i spoke with uh, chris nonton just very briefly about a possible podcast with him and I and we agreed that I need to study more <laughs> before I can actually have a podcast with him because before you can actually you know um, like because if you know it has to be an exchange right so you want to be able to uh, you know have a conversation with a who is a super archaeologist so I want to study more before I actually um, you know uh, do the episode with Chris Norton so yeah, I mean, I hope you're happy and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.